By the time we return after the weekend, a SWAC and MEAC champion will already have been crowned. So let's take this last opportunity to go around the SWAC and MEAC tournament highlighted by Texas Southern knocking off Jackson State in the first round. Oh, yeah, it's locked on HBCU. Play my music. You are locked on HBCU, your daily podcast covering HBCU sports. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, family? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On HBCU Podcast, your number one daily one-stop shop for everything hbcu athletics monday through friday part of the locked on podcast network your team every day and i of course am darian gray aka the mouth of the south texas southern alum and former tsu herald sports editor and current contributing writer at usa today's saints wire thank you for going on this journey with me make a locked on hbcu your first listen of the day every day and remember just because the mic cuts off does not mean that the journey is over. Just means it's time to follow me on Twitter at South Exclusives. Starts with an S and ends with an S. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more and new customers. When you go to FanDuel, you get $200 back in bonus bets if you put down a $5 winning bet and you're new to FanDuel. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every moment more. We wrap up today's episode with a look at the NCAA tournament standings, the outlook of it and the potential you know, ramifications of each outcome, right? We're not going to go through every single team, but we're going to go over what most of them could mean. Prior to that, we'll go around the SWAC and MEAC tournament. We'll start with Howard versus North Carolina Central women's basketball, and then we'll get into some SWAC topics. So it'll be kind of more rapid fire in segment two. But we kick off today's episode with a look at Texas Southern versus Jackson State. It is a game that I already had highlighted coming into Friday or excuse me, Thursday's action. And it didn't disappoint. If you enjoy Texas Southern versus Jackson State, either one of them, one or two this year, because they played twice prior to their tournament showdown. If you enjoyed either one of those games, then you would have enjoyed this because Every single one of their games kind of transpired the same way. The winner was just different. The first time Jackson State won, and they had a nice controlled lead. It wasn't a huge lead, but they controlled that lead, and that's how they were able to just go through the second half. Then at one point, Texas Southern made a real push, and they got it down like four or five points. It was only a 13-point lead, so it was never out of reach. I would never have said that. So that's where this was a little bit different. But that was never out of reach. You just seen Texas Southern make a late push, but Jackson State already had that lead. So then they just expanded it back out, ended up being a nine-point win. Then you look at Texas Southern's victory in the regular season. Texas Southern was the one who they were going back and forth. They were going back and forth that game. It was no lead, but you saw a late surge by Jackson State responded to by Texas Southern. And basically the team that threw that last punch was a team that won. That was the same thing here. It never really felt like, so TSU got out fast. Like they, they jumped out the gate and they were scoring basically immediately. And they jumped up on Jackson State to build up this cushion, this cushion that allowed them to fall back. And that's the thing I want to attack is because watching the second half, it kept feeling as if Jackson State had some sort of momentum. But it never amounted to anything because every time it felt like Jackson State did something to build, every time it felt like Jackson State was finally getting a push, I would look down and the lead was 17 points. And I don't say this to be dismissive or anything. It kept feeling like kept feeling like things were bouncing Jackson State's direction. It kept feeling as if things in some way were about to go JSU's way. Then I would look down and the the score would say 59 to 42 or something like that. Like, that's what I would see. And then finally, they did make a dent. 
finally they did make a dent and it would be an 11 point lead or an 11 point deficit, depending on how you're looking at it. That's as close as this game ever got. And then Texas Southern, uh, uh, Texas Southern, then kind of what's the word I want to say? Not addressed. Why is that the, uh, I guess fire back for lack of a better term right now. It's I'm having a brain fart, but Texas Southern then answered back. That's the word answered back. And it was the duo of PJ Henry and Jonathan and, and Jonathan CC. Like that's what it was. You could look at Colty young and Ken Evans for Jackson state. You could look at them. Ken Evans did not perform well today. I thought he got to the line a couple of times, but I also felt as if the whistle I wasn't a fan of the whistle today, but the majority of his damage was from the free throw line. And he got a couple of free throws where I think this happened twice, where he got fouled once, got his own rebound on a missed free throw, and then got right back to the line immediately. Like I like so I think that was like eight of his attempts. Two, four, and then two, four. Like I think that's how it happened. Colty Young did a decent job, but it was too late, too, too little, too late for that. You look at you look at CeCe and, and Henry, those two players were performing consistently. And TSU came out shooting nearly 70%. And I don't just mean those two players. I mean the team in the first half was shooting about 70% from the field. CeCe didn't miss his first six or seven shots. And when they finally got things kind of under control with him, then you had Henry who came in. And he answered with that. And it was just an overall offensive onslaught in that first half that allowed a... a lesser second half to not be a problem. Jackson State never got too close. And now Texas Southern. Oh, let me point out CeCe, though. That man was ridiculous. He led the team in the game in points. He led the team in the game in assists. And he was one behind leading the game in rebounds. But he did lead his team in rebounds. Jonathan CeCe was an absolute monster. In this first round matchup. Now Texas Southern goes to face Alabama A&M. I told you I would give you my perfect quarterfinals. Once we got to the sem Or my perfect semifinals. Once we got to the semis. It went to absolute trash. I wanted to see Grambling versus Southern. Didn't get that because Bethune Cookman won. And then I wanted to see Alcorn versus whoever won. Objectively. I wanted to be TSU because I'm a TSU guy. But objectively I just wanted whoever would win. To win that game. If it was Texas Southern versus, or if it was Alcorn versus Jackson State, then I would have sat there and I would have said, okay, at least they get to have their in-state rival. That's really what I was looking at, Bayou Classic, right? Then you got, like, it, it was beautiful. Then you look at Alcorn versus Texas Southern. Texas Southern is a team that continuously knocks out Alcorn in the tournament. The last two years, that's what happened. Alcorn has failed to TSU. So you had the storyline there of, you know what? He's got to finish his story. Alcorn has to finish their story. Well, don't talk to me about finishing stories, right? Now, I do have a team who is looking to finish a story, and that is Howard women's basketball team. But they got some really interesting chapters on the way, and the one we're about to read is Howard women's basketball versus North Carolina Central is the third time the charm. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from an from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription, fee subscription fees apply. And investing involves risk, including taxes. Limitations apply uh, to IRAs and 401ks, 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep a Robinhood IRA for five years. 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC is a registered broker dealer. 
Today's episode is also brought to you by Fire TV. I'm telling you guys, where's my remote? This is not a game. I don't know where my remote's at, but I showed you on yesterday's episode. But I love the display. I love the easy access. I love the suggestions that I receive from Fire TV. When I open it up and I want to go to Netflix, every now and then I'm distracted by the other options. And I see something new and I stumble across and say, oh, I didn't even know. I didn't even know that one of my favorite shows had just gotten on to Netflix. Now I do. And you can thank Fire TV, or at least I will. And if you want to go to Amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV, because they also have their Fire TV channels. This is all a beautiful thing. You can see your favorite sports videos, your cooking videos, your locked on HBCU for the third time that day. If you really want to, you can go on fire tv channels and check that out get ready for march madness the opening weekend of the mlb and everything in between go to amazon.com slash locked on fire tv to learn more Today, as we continue rolling on today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day every day. For your second listen, make sure you're checking out the Locked on Bracket show because y'all already know what time it is. It's March Madness, and with March Madness comes your brackets. So go ahead and check out my guys at the Bracket Breakdown show. You're going to have Isaac Shade, and you're also going to have Andy Patton who break down their brackets and discuss everything you need to know. It is live at 7 a.m. Eastern time, so 6 a.m. Central, Monday, March 18th on the Locked On College Basketball Podcast. But let's keep rolling because Howard Women's Basketball is attempting and looking to exercise a couple of demons, and their names are North Carolina Central. Because I've never been shy about saying what I want to see. If there's a matchup that I'm like, hey, I want to see that. That's the that's the showdown I want to see. I'll say it. I will say it anytime, right? I want to see Howard versus Norfolk State in this championship game. And when I speak about Howard finishing their story and everything, right? This is for my that's for my WWE fans. I don't care about who wins that game. I just want to see that game. But the thing about it is there's a big obstacle in the way of that game. In this North Carolina Central women's basketball. Because you have to follow me on this. I've come on here and I spoke glowingly about Howard in in previewing their matchup versus Norfolk State. The idea that they could be Norfolk State's kryptonite. And they lost or they beat Norfolk State the first time, the only team to beat them. It was a pretty good game the second time it was close. I want to see it again. But the problem is. They didn't successfully sweep Norfolk State. That didn't happen. North Carolina Central did successfully sweep Howard. They've yet to beat the Eagles. So when we talk about I want to see Howard versus Norfolk State, everything can be put to a stop right now on Friday. This will be the game that you need to watch. If everything else, that you already had Norfolk State, because we're going around the, the, the tournament, right? You already had Norfolk State. They had a warm-up game. That, that wasn't even fair. Somebody should have said, yeah, South Carolina State cannot be the eighth seed. They got embarrassed again, but shout out to them because they held Norfolk State to the least amount of points that they've scored against South Carolina State this year. And the Lady Bulldogs put up more points than they had this year. So can we get a hand clap? Can we get a can we get a Hurricane Chris hand clap for that? Because that was a warm-up matchup. We'll see what they can do in this quarterfinals against Coppin State or yeah the quarterfinals no the semifinals against Coppin State and then we'll see if they can beat them and then they'll get to the conference finals and will they face Howard will we get that game for a third time or will they face North Carolina Central those are things to watch but let's keep rolling like I said we're rapid fire but we're gonna stick right there in Washington DC or more so no folk Virginia because that's where they're all playing but we're looking at Howard Howard versus Norfolk State men's basketball is the game that we're going to watch. And this is one that I'm I'm fascinated in because unlike the women, Norfolk State swept this series. But I still never quite feel the ability to count Howard out. And I know it was kind of ugly. I can't remember what the final score was. But at halftime, 
Howard had a, a a pretty big hole to climb themselves out of. But yeah, so that that's that. I think that Howard still has a fighting chance. This is in no way a clear victory for Norfolk State, but it's going to be one that you would want to watch. I, I hope that that game is back to back. Then let's go through a couple of swack storylines because you got two. UAPB women's basketball barely held on. It, it looked like they were about to give up a 23, I believe it was. Yeah, like a 23, 24 point lead. Like this was major. And um, what's it called? Then you had Alabama AM who was firing back. To my knowledge, Grambling is the only SWAC team to win both of their games. Like, I think, yeah. If I'm not mistaken, Grambling is the only school in the SWAC to have their men and women's team win. So let's show some love to Grambling because Texas Southern didn't make it. UAP, or excuse me, Alabama A&M lost this game. UAPB didn't make it. Jackson State lost. Alcorn split. I'm trying to look. Yeah, I'm going through them. Grambling is the only team. As we go through every single one of these victors, Grambling is the only team in the SWAC that still has two teams remaining in the tournament. That's not the case over there at the MEAC. Uh, Howard has both their teams in. North Carolina Central has both their teams in. Norfolk State has both of their teams in. Like, like this is, it's a way different situation. Way different situation. But anyway, UAPB barely held on, but they did hold on. Um, Alcorn, like I just mentioned, they got it back. They knocked off Southern. Southern lost both of their games. Southern might be the only team to lose both of their games. I'm trying to think. No, they can't be. FAMU. Yeah, FAMU lost both their games. But um, shout out to FAMU, by the way. Shout out to FAMU women's basketball specifically. Ariana Grizzle, SWAC player of the year. Coach Gordon, a lot of success in her first year. I'm getting a little off track now. Delaware State also knocked off South Carolina State, which means they'll be meeting North Carolina Central, and I'll be watching because I talked a lot of talk about Delaware State, so we'll see if they can make it up. We're going around and around and around. It's, I'm highlighted by Howard attempting to exercise some demons against North Carolina Central, what that could mean, what that could lead to. There's so much intrigue in that game and then what comes from it. But there's some other things to look at. UAP barely holding on, Alcorn getting it back for their uh, – getting some revenge for the men's team, knocking off Southern. Then you look at Delaware State, knocking off South Carolina State. When I've been talking about the Hornets not being able to win any big-time games. So it's all there. It's all there. But now we push forward because it's more than that. I want to look at the NCAA tournament. This is where things really come into play, and I want to break down what our HBCU tournament champions will be looking forward to. We're not going to go into every team. We're just going to kind of go swag men's women, Swack, uh, MEAC men's women. That's how we're going to go and look at it as we continue with Locked On HBCU. Today's episode is brought to you by Nissan, and we do the March Madness breakdown to highlight, uh, to highlight our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out. We're currently in conference championship action or conference tournament action, and a team that's pushed it further than the rest, just like any of the all new. 2024 Nissan SUVs, and I would have to go with Alabama A&M, and then I would also have to go with Delaware State. Both of those teams kind of remind me of the Nissan Rogue because they absolutely surprised us with a powerful performance against whether that was who was Alcorn um, against Alcorn or versus South Carolina State. Both of those teams were great, so. Win life, go rogue, and that's exactly what both of those teams have done. So go ahead and look at the selection of Nissan SUVs at NissanUSA.com. As we're wrapping up today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making this your first listen of the day every day, making it all the way to segment three, and I thank you two times for that. Thank you. Thank you. We're heading into the semifinals of the MEAC and SWAC tournament. That's what we're here for. That's what we're highlighting. That's what we're really having a lot of good time predicting. I think it's going to be a great semifinal, but allow me to look forward. Because by the time you hear me, this won't be relevant. I ain't going to say it won't be relevant, but there'll be no more prediction. 
right? So I want to say what I'm looking at and what I'm expecting out of our conference champions. And it all depends on who it is. Um, but the NCAA selection show will be Sunday. If Jackson State and or Norfolk State women's basketball makes it in, it may be everybody, but definitely those two. If those two win, I'm going to try to get my guy Isaac from Locked On College Basketball to come on here. It, it's a really busy time for him, so we might not be able to. I may just ask him to try to send something. I don't know. But I want to try to get some explanations for what type of seedings we receive. But right now, I'm looking at what kind of seedings I believe that we will receive. And that's completely different. And this is me just kind of predicting some things, right? So we'll kick it off with the SWAC women's basketball. Jackson State is the most interesting one to me because Jackson State feels rare. Jackson State feels like the rare HBCU who is able to get national acclaim pretty much from just beating HBCUs because you look at their out-of-conference schedule, I don't think it's great. Maybe I'm out of the loop, but it doesn't seem great to me. You look at St. John's. That's like the only school of, of note on there. When you're really looking at it, like this is the only school I'm trying to think. Make sure I'm not tripping. They they don't they don't have a mid-major that they're just knocking off. They're not a mid-major just knocking off a bunch of people, but they end up getting a top 25 selection. When you have a top 25, oh, back it up. They got a top 25 vote, not a selection. They didn't make it in the top 25, but they got a vote to be there. Jackson State getting a vote for the top 25 to me tells me I need to expect 14 or better. Dawn Staley came out and said they would have another vote if she was there. I'm not saying that Staley is the end all be all, but her voice has enough respect and commands enough respect to where somebody will be like, you know what? I kind of want to look at them differently or I should look at them second. And see if I look at them differently. Like these, these things really do come into play. So when I'm looking at Jackson State, they're rare to me in the sense that they don't have a great out of conference victory. Like they, they don't have that. But what they do have is going into the SWAC and absolutely dominating on a level that is impossible to ignore. And you compare that or combine that with their recent success because they've been great for a half decade at this point. When you combine all of those things together and mix them up, you get a team that has a top 25 vote, and I'm expecting to be a 14, maybe even a 13 seed, and now we're really having conversations about what they can do in the tournament because being a 16 seed is way different. So now let's go to the MEAC women, and that's Norfolk State. By the way, if anybody other than Jackson State gets it, 16 seed them, period. 16 seed them. Maybe, maybe even be a play -in. You're looking at Norfolk State on the MEAC side, and they're interesting because I think that they can get a, I ought to be wrong about this, but I think that they could get a 15. And I, I think that they only lost to Howard. They have, they have a couple of stars in Kira Wheeler and Diamond Johnson, people who have gotten some notoriety nationally. Maybe the team could get some of that as well. I think that with their one loss, they could get a 15 seed. I genuinely believe that. In the wins they had over South Carolina State, all three of them are going to ring loud. You beating team by 60. Jackson State beat a team by 50. Like, like this is domination where it doesn't matter who you play. If Howard gets in their 16 seed, maybe even if North Carolina Central 16 seed, I don't think either one of them ends up being in the play-in. And by play-in, I mean the 68 team bracket that goes in the 64 where you have two 16 seeds who have to play against each other. The stupidest thing ever. It's the stupidest thing ever. I don't understand how the NCAA tournament can take two teams with automatic qualifiers and say, all right, you now have to compete against each other to play in the real March Madness. No, how about you get one of these at-large people and they can fight it out? But I'm an automatic qualifier. That, to me, is a contradiction because, and I know it comes from the fact that I don't view the 68 teams as the real March Madness. Like, matter of fact, 68 teams is the NCAA tournament. March Madness is 64. You'll never be remembered. You will never be remembered if you're a playing team who lost. Point blank, period. Anyway, 
Now let's get into the men's side. The men's side, Grambling and North, yeah, Grambling and Norfolk State are in very similar situations. I don't know if they have an impressive out of conference win. I don't. I don't know if they do. Um, and I hate to be pessimistic about it, but I think that Grambling has a better shot. So let's be optimistic on this side. I think Grambling has a better shot of making it as a 16 seed without the plan than Norfolk State does. I just think that losing to Maryland Eastern Shore, that is one of the worst teams in a conference that's already not respected. Just saying. This is not a respected conference. The MIAC and the SWAC are not nationally respected. I, I'm just telling y'all the truth, and you know that. You know that. Grambling, on the other hand, they lost to an Alabama State, but Alabama State was a tournament team in a conference where all the teams in the conference do not make the tournament. That is the case in, in the MIAC. Every team makes the tournament, right? So, like, it's a little different. That's not one of the worst teams in the SWAC. You're losing some of these games, so I, I think both have a chance at being a playing team. But if you had to guess, I think that Grambling, I think that Grambling would be a 16 seed for sure. And I think that, or excuse me, I think Grambling would be a 16 seed, no for sure. And I think that Norfolk State would be a playing team. That's just my prediction. Um, everybody else playing. Texas Southern, playing. Um, even though their history, playing. So I appreciate you. Don't play in with us, right? Just go ahead and make this your first listen of the day every day. I'm not competing against that podcast to compete to be against that podcast. I'm not doing it. Make this your first listen of the day every day. And I appreciate you every day. Until Monday, when we come back with some NCAA seedings, some Swack and Meak champions, take care. Stay blessed. Peace.